The purpose of preliminary treatment is to remove debris and other inorganic material from the wastewater to protect downstream treatment processes. This is accomplished by racks, screens, grinders, grit channels, and other equipment designed to pretreat the wastewater in preparation for advanced treatment further downstream. Failure of the preliminary treatment process may lead to a failure in the downstream treatment processes as well. For this reason, proper maintenance and operation of preliminary treatment equipment is of vital importance. There are various types of racks and screens that remove large debris from the wastewater so that it doesn't interfere with downstream processes. Removal of this debris also prevents the clogging of pumps, pipes, and air diffusers associated with grit channels. Coarse bar racks remove large items, while screens typically remove smaller objects such as rags, plastics, and paper items. These screenings must be removed at regular intervals by either manual or automatic means. Once removed, the screenings will be disposed of by incineration or burial at a landfill. There are two types of coarse screens. There's trash racks and bar screens. The distance between the bars determines whether it's a trash rack or a bar screen. Trash racks, also called bar racks, are constructed of steel bars that are spaced two to six inches apart. These bars are placed in a flow channel at an angle ranging from 30 to 45 degrees from the vertical 12 o'clock position. Bar racks can be cleaned either manually by treatment plant personnel or automatically by mechanized heavy-duty steel rakes. Trash racks are installed at treatment plants that see high volumes of large debris. Bar racks that are automatically cleaned must be regularly inspected and maintained to ensure proper operation. This includes regular lubrication of moving parts at proper intervals, as directed by the manufacturer. The operator should observe all moving parts to ensure free and smooth operation and listen for abnormal sounds that may indicate a problem. If a problem is observed, corrective action should be taken immediately to prevent damage to the automated equipment. Bar screens are similar to bar racks, except the spacing between the bars is smaller. Bar screen spacing ranges from 0.75 to 2 inches. Another difference is the angle at which they are installed. Bar screens are installed at a 15 to 30 degree angle from the 12 o'clock position. This is to accommodate the mechanical raking mechanism that continuously cleans the screen. There are various designs of cleaning mechanisms which include cable and rake, continuous chain, catenary, reciprocating rake, and continuous self-cleaning systems. Screens can vary in width from 2 feet to 14 feet to accommodate a wide variety of flow channel widths. The spacing between the bars will depend on the downstream processes and their debris removal requirements. Most plants will have at least two flow channels to allow for the isolation of a screen should corrective maintenance be required or if manual cleaning requires isolation. Plant flow should be evenly distributed among all screens to provide for uniform distribution of debris loading to each screen. A common type of automatically cleaned bar screen is the front cleaning bar rake which has a rake mechanism on the upstream side of the bar screen. Another type of screen is known as a traveling bar screen, which is continuously self-cleaned. This type of screen has a flexible screen that continuously moves, like a conveyor belt, and pulls the solids it captures out of the waste stream. Whether the screens and racks are manually cleaned or automatically cleaned, treatment plant operators must ensure that the screens are cleaned at intervals sufficient to allow the continuous flow of wastewater. If large quantities of screenings are allowed to accumulate on the rack or screen, odor problems are likely to occur. More frequent cleaning cycles are required during storm events which will increase the flow from the collection system to the treatment plant and bring with it additional debris. There are four different ways to control the automatic cleaning mechanisms on racks and screens. These methods include the use of an on-off switch, a timer, a level sensor, 
and programmable logic controllers. Most automatic cleaning mechanisms operate off a timer. However, more plants are installing PLCs to control the cleaning cycles based on time and water level. Although timed operation works well under normal circumstances, this type of control can't accommodate a sudden influx of debris caused by changing collection system conditions. Level sensing systems can detect the increase in head loss through the screen or rack and activate the cleaning mechanism. In a system that incorporates both a timer and a level sensor that's incorporated into a PLC, the level sensor will have priority over the timer to activate the cleaning mechanism. These PLC controlled systems will generally be set up so that the timer is reset once the level sensor triggers a cleaning cycle. Some wastewater treatment plants will install a float switch on the upstream side of the rack or screen that will trigger an alarm if water level in the flow channel reaches a predetermined level. This lets the operator know that water is backing up behind the screen or rack and action must be taken. There are various types of grinding devices that chop or shred debris that's in the wastewater and then sends it downstream to the next treatment process. Since these devices don't remove the debris in the water, but simply make it into a smaller form, they don't reduce the load on downstream processes. These grindings and shreddings can create problems in primary clarifiers, sludge thickening units, and sludge dewatering units. Because of this, their use is limited, and they usually follow a screening process designed to remove larger debris. These grinding and shredding devices go by various names, which include comminuters, bar minuters, and the channel monster. Regardless of the type of grinding device, they all require regular inspection and proper maintenance to ensure proper operation and prolonged equipment life. The treatment plant operator should inspect all moving parts for free operation during routine plant rounds and take corrective action immediately if a problem is discovered. The modern trend in newer treatment plants or treatment plants that have been upgraded is to install finer screens that have openings of less than one-fourth of an inch. These screens are installed downstream of coarse screens. It goes without saying that these finer screens will remove more debris than screens with larger openings and will therefore require more frequent cleaning to allow the free flow of wastewater through the flow channel. It's also worth noting that these finer screens collect more organic waste than larger screens, which could cause odor problems. These screens are designed such that they move like a conveyor belt and are continuously exposing freshly cleaned screen to the flow channel while removing the screenings and depositing them in a container for disposal at the landfill. Take a look at how these screens operate. A screening press is a device that is used to dewater screenings so that they'll be acceptable by the landfill. In addition to removing water, this press also reduces the volume of debris to be sent to the landfill. This device operates on the principle of compression and basically wrings the water out of the captured screenings. There are several things to consider and manage when overseeing the debris removal activities involved with the preliminary treatment process. And these include the prevention of waste stream channel overflows, minimizing odors generated by screenings, and ensuring that personnel follow good hygiene practices while handling debris. If the racks and screens are not cleaned at sufficient intervals, it's possible that the wastewater will overflow the channel since there is not an adequate flow path for the water to pass through a rack or screen that's clogged with debris. Proper management of debris removal is essential to preventing flow channel overflows. It's important that the screenings are not allowed to accumulate on site over a long period of time. Screenings contain organic material that will degrade and cause severe odor problems. Screenings should be disposed of at regular intervals to prevent the generation of foul odors. These screenings may also harbor pathogenic organisms that can cause illness or disease to treatment plant personnel. 
Therefore, it's important that treatment plant personnel use proper personal protective equipment when handling these screenings for disposal. Treatment plants using automated rack and screen cleaning systems typically have a conveyor belt system that is used to transport the screenings away from the bar rack or screen to a collection point where the screenings accumulate before being transported to the landfill for burial. All problems that arise during the operation of the screening process can be categorized into the following three areas. Unusual operational conditions causing the equipment to clog or jam equipment breakdown or component failure, or a failure of the control system.